Okay, so we're gonna finish chapter 32 and then finish the book. I'm not Daniela McCarthy, she screamed. She had tears in her eyes. Being tasered must truly hurt. I lied. I'm not one of your missing kids from history. I'm, I'm just his sister. She pointed at Jonah. You have to let me go. You have to let everyone go. No, that can't be, Mr. Hodge glared at Gary and hopped toward him, hope, pulling against the ropes. I, I thought you said that the handprints all matched. They did, Gary insisted. I didn't touch the rock, Catherine said. I just pretended. So you can't zap me. Gary looked at Mr. Hodge, who'd stopped hopping, and they both shrugged. Oh, well, Gary said, 35 treasures and one mistake. He smirked at Catherine. I'm sure we'll find someone who might be willing to take you. You can't do this, J.B. screamed. That's another violation of time. Gary raised the elucidator, pointing it carefully again. What will you tell our parents? Catherine demanded. Freak Rock Cave-In. Such a tragedy, Gary said carelessly. 36 children killed, and sadly, the bodies will never be found. Jonah thought about his parents losing both him and Catherine, all because Catherine had been so stubbornly loyal. It wasn't fair. It wasn't right. But what could he do? Gary had the taser and the elucidator. He had muscles in his arms thicker than Jonah's legs. Jonah leaped at Gary anyway. Even in midair, Jonah had no idea what he intended to do to Gary. Arm wrestling him from the elucidator or the taser was out of the question. Punching him would be as useless as punching a brick wall. So Jonah decided to take a page out of Catherine's book. With one hand, she grabbed for Gary's hair. With the other, she poked his fingers into Gary's eyes. He poked his fingers into Gary's eyes. Ow! Gary screamed. Reflexively, he lifted his hands toward his face. The taser clattered toward the ground. Gary trapped it again with one foot. Jonah let go of Gary's hair and grabbed the elucidator just as Gary was shoving him away, flinging him toward the stone wall. Jonah slammed against the wall hard. He thought he could feel every bone of his spine hitting the rock one bone after the other. So it took him a few moments to realize the elucidator was in his hand. Ha! Jonah shouted at Gary. Gary only smiled. Doesn't matter, kid, he said. It's already programmed. That's one of the newer models. You don't even have to point it. You just do it out of habit. Jonah looked down at the screen of the elucidator, which seemed to be engaged in some kind of countdown. Ten, nine, eight, as the seven blinked onto the screen, Jonah threw the elucidator as hard as he could toward the far corner of the cave. JB, he screamed, make it stop. Jonah could see JB catching the elucidator, hitting buttons. Jonah, somehow Jonah managed to get up to rush across the cave toward JB. Other kids had the same idea, flocking together toward JB. Jonah started to trip over something. The taser? Wait a minute, where, where'd Gary gone? Bye friends, JB said softly. I hope you enjoy time, prison. Then Mr. Hodge vanished too, right from right in the middle of the room. Stunned, Jonah leaned over and scooped up the taser. He kept running toward JB. Is it safe now? Jonah asked. Did, did you stop the countdown? JB still had his head bent over the elucidator. He was still punching buttons. Jonah crowded close with Chip and Catherine and Alex pressed in tightly beside him. Jay's, JB raised his head. I'm truly sorry, he said. This is what I have to do. He pointed the elucidator at Alex and Alex disappeared. Then he turned the elucidator towards Chip. No, Chip screamed. Catherine clutched Chip's right arm and joined screams with his. Jonah still had the taser in his right hand, but there wasn't time to use it. He looped his right elbow around Chip's arm, hoping to hold him in place. With his left hand, Jonah made a swipe for the elucidator. The cave was already melting away. No! Jonah wasn't even sure who was screaming. Catherine, Chip, himself, the elucidator? Hold on. The elucidator? He could feel it in his left hand. He was clutching it as tightly as he was clutching the taser, as tightly as his ha he had his arm wrapped around Chip's. But he couldn't see anything because he had his eyes squeezed shut. He dared to open one eye, just a crack. He and Chip and Catherine seemed to be tumbling through the outer nothingness, but tumbling toward a vague hint of light far off in the distance. Oh! This time he was sure the whale was coming from the elucidator, speaking in JB's voice. 
Jonah, there's been a mistake. JB's voice came out loud and clear and anxious straight from the elucidator. You and Catherine have no business going into the 15th century with Chip and Alex. You're not allowed. You could cause even more damage and you can't take the elucidator or the taser there. You should have thought of this before you zapped Chip, Jonah said. And he was amazed that he could sound so defiant out here in the middle of nothingness. You should have known that we'd stick together. There was silence, as if JB was trying to accept that. Maybe he hadn't known they would stick together. Look, I'll tell you what to do so you and Catherine can come back, JB said, his voice strained. No, Jonah said stubbornly. Tell us what to do so we can all come back, even Alex. Chip looked over at Jonah, gratitude gleaming in his eyes. Jonah, JB protested, you don't know what you're talking about. Certain things have been set in motion. Chip and Alex have to go to the 15th century. Then Catherine and I are going too, Jonah said. He didn't know how it was possible, but he could feel time flowing past him, scrolling backward. He felt like he had only a few more seconds left to convince JB. What if, what if we could fix the 15th century, make everything right again? Then couldn't Alex and Chip come back to the 21st century with us? Silence. Jonah had nervous tremors in his stomach. The hand holding the elucidator was shaking. He wasn't even sure what he was asking for, but he couldn't stop now. You have to let us try, Jonah argued. Let us try to save Chip and Alex and Chip in time, or else, he had to come up with a good threat, or else what? Oh, or else we'll do our best to mess up time even worse than Hodge and Gary did. The silence from the elucidator continued. Jonah worried that they'd floated out of range or that the battery had stopped working, just like a defective cell phone. Then JB's voice came through again, faint but distinct. All right, he said wearily, I'll let you try. The lights on the horizon were getting brighter and Jonah knew nothing, nothing about the 15th century. He truly didn't know what he had just bargained for. Wow, Chip said, you make a promise, you really keep it. Promise? Jonah wondered what, what promise. And then he remembered what he told Chip right after Chip found out that he was adopted. I swear I'll do everything I can to help you. It seemed like he'd said that hundreds of years ago, hundreds of lifetimes ago. No, hundreds of years and lifetimes ahead. Jonah's stomach gurgled. He can tell he was out of the non-time limbo because he was hungry again, starving in fact. You think they have good turkey legs in the 15th century, he asked. There was no time for Chip and Catherine to answer or even to make a fun of this question. The lights were getting brighter and brighter, rushing at them faster and faster and faster. Welcome to the 15th century, JB said grimly through the elucidator. Good luck. And that is the end of our story. So now we know where they ended up. And as some of you predicted, it sounds like it's only just begun. That's why there is a series. I wonder who, which of you will be reading the second one. We'll talk soon. <laughs>